it's an incredible experience. What a wonderful place to watch it as well. It's absolutely stunning. Good plan, because you now you have two days free to enjoy Paris and indeed this. But in terms of your interest in horses, I know you have some race horses that you have shares in, but how big is your interest in these beasts? Well, fairly big. Um, I try and stay, stay off them, obviously, but uh, <laughs> between myself and, and Chubby and a few other guys, we've got probably about 14 or 15 race horses. And, uh, but nothing, nothing quite like this. This is, uh, this is fairly special to watch. It's, uh, it, the power is incredible, isn't it? Uh, Scott Brash, Scott, I have to ask you, you were down at the golf today. Yeah, were you watching this, man? The, yeah, they just caught him on the, on the last screen there. And yeah. It looked, looked well on the I last screen, but unfortunately he's not made the cut. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, we went there for a couple of hours today and it was, it was great, great. It's great to go and watch another sport and watch these guys do their thing. I mean, it's, uh, it's really, really, really entertaining for us to, to go and you know, get away from the, the show. Yeah. No. I, I can't imagine that these two sports have much, if anything, in common. Can you think of anything? I don't know. I think I think all sports would have, have you know, a lot more in common than you think, actually. Um, you need patience to ride a horse. You need patience to hit a golf ball. And <laughs> well, I do, anyway. <laughs> I think, Liam, I'd agree with you the way things went today. I mean, we do have water jumps, of course, um, and I think you spent quite a lot of time in the water today, Liam. Am I right? Yeah, I've seen enough water for, for one day or two days. I was in the water about six or seven times over the first two days at the French Home. There is a lot out there, but I was in too much. Yeah. But, you know, obviously, you know, talking to Scott, that, you know, the, the comparisons are that, you know, to get to the top of uh, any sport at the highest level, you've got to have, you know, determination. You've got to be a hard worker. Um, you know, mentally very strong as well. So there are a lot of comparisons. The, the mental strength is key, actually. I mean, the great advantage you have is if things go wrong for you, you can blame the horse. He can only blame himself. <laughs> and the caddy. <laughs> and the caddy, that's what he's there for. Yeah, there's always something to blame, you know. We can always find something, yeah. <laughs> but Scott, if you were to advise Lee, if you finally managed to get him saddled up and to go on to one of these things, start him off on some low jumps, what are, what are the three pieces of advice you could give him? Three pieces of advice. <laughs> Don't. Hopefully that he stays on anyway. But no, I am. Um, yeah, yeah, it would. Uh, yeah, it would be. Uh, yeah, I mean, you would talk about your rhythm, your uh, your straightness. You know, all all those all those aspects that I, I don't want to bore you too much. But no, it's <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, there would be would pl be plenty of advice uh, straight away. I would think. But yeah. I think it's like any sport. Once you get into riding and get, you know find your, your love for it, it's, yeah. it takes over and uh, becomes your life. Yeah, we always talk about rhythm when, when you're having a swing at the ball. And, and, and in terms of advice for this man, slow down your swing. Isn't that the best piece of advice you can give to any golfer? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, have lessons straight away so you've got the right technique. Um, and then it's, you know, there's a lot of rhythm involved. You know, the worst thing you can do is rush it. You've got a, you know, you've got a lot of time to hit the ball and get everything coordinated correctly and, and working at the right time. And, I guess if it doesn't go right after about two or three months, take up another sport. <laughs> but you've stuck with it. Yeah, I was pretty good after a couple of months. So I, I, I'm thankfully I, st I stayed with it. Greatest achievement, world number one or, or Ryder Cup hero? What, what would you say? Oh, I think getting to world number one is fairly special. Uh, you know, whenever you can say you're the best at, at something in the world is obviously an incredible achievement. But I wouldn't, you know, I, I, I wouldn't swap anything for the, for the nine Ryder Cups I've played and, and, and the seven that I've been on a winning side for. A phenomenal feat. Well done, guys. Two world number ones here, two pure sporting champions. Guys, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us this evening. And Lee, enjoy the show. It's going to be fun. Forward to it. Thank you. Good man. Thank you, gents.